Hi one and all and welcome to today's video on collecting and classifying data. This is part of a year eight series on maths and what are we going to show you? We're going to look at describing data, numerical data, categorical data and all of the excitement that is held within. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Darren, maths guru, and I'm here to make sure that maths for you is as easy as it possibly can be. Welcome. Now, if you are new to my channel, do me a favor. Can you subscribe by clicking that doohickey over there in the corner for me? Greatly, greatly appreciated. And spread the word, let your friends know. Um, I, I've got about 19 subscribers now. Life is very, very good and very excited. Trying to get to at least 25 or 50 or a hundred or maybe a million. No, 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 it's going to my head. And there's not enough hair there for it to go. Um, it's really good to see you. Um, what am I going to do with these videos? I'm going to try and teach you as much as I possibly can by using the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which you hopefully have. If not, well, then you're probably not in Victoria. And by that, I mean in Australia. But it doesn't matter. This video is going to help you understand everything you need to know mathematics. I always start by some sort of sort of list of what we're going to learn, and I've already gone through it. We're going to look at numerical data, categorical data, and how we can describe all sorts of stuff. And this feeds into statistics and probability, very, very important topic that we use throughout maths. Now, sadly, uh, there isn't really, really a recap for this topic. It's brand new, all right? Many of you who are being taught by me at this moment in time won't even have heard of this stuff because it is new. Don't worry about it. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. All you need to do is learn the key words. Much like many subjects like science and languages and whatever else, if you learn the key words, then you are flying. Well, maybe not flying, but you'll be certainly doing well at mathematics. So... As I'm doing this video, if you've got a piece of paper and a pen handy, write down the important words. It will really, really help you. Now, the first thing we're going to deal with, there are two types of data. The first one is numerical data. Num, 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 numerical data. And numerical data is something that can be measured, counted, ugh, or observed. Now, lots of people go to me, how do you remember that? And I'm going to say, well, let's look at the word new, N-U-M, E-R-I-C-A-L, numerical. What are the first three letters of numerical? Num. And look at this word here, N-U-M-B-E-R-S, numbers. So numerical and numbers start with the same thing. And what are the uh, different types of numerical data? Well, what do you think this picture here is showing? Oh, I don't know, maybe height. And what about this one here? Someone is running and if they're running they're going to have some sort of a time and everyone's going oh look, little cutie baby in the middle of the t wait maybe uh yep uh, awesome so that's the type of numerical data and then the other one we have is called categorical and that's what we put into categories that's uh, data that doesn't have numbers but maybe has eye color so think about eye color is red, green, no, not red, I'm joking, or green. Uh, blue, brown, what other colors can we have? Hazel, uh, those are sort of categorical data. This one here, I live over here in Australia, uh, recording for the world, um, but I live in a state called Victoria. And so Victoria, my state is categorical, all right? It's not a number, it is a state. And what is this one here? No, it does not mean that I need to go to the toilet. It is male or female. Now, gender, again, is categorical. The great thing about categorical data is it can't be put in an order. You know, if I said to you which is more important, males or females? Now, depending on whether you're a male or a female, you're probably going to shout, male, female, male, female. And it gets very, very debate. Uh, very heated when people do that, but you can't really put eye color or the states of uh, the Australia or uh, gender into any particular order. So those are the two main types of uh, data, so numerical and categorical. And then we can subdivide them, we can split them up, we can say, well, hold on, for numerical data, there's also two different types of numerical data. The first one is discrete, all right? So can you see that here? So discrete data. Now discrete data can only take whole number value. So these are things that we can count, whole numbers. And I've said here, examples might include the number of people in the classroom. Yes, the, you're not gonna have 3.7 people in a classroom, are you? I mean, you might, but that means they're probably without their head or their arm. I, I, I don't know about you, I'd be a little bit freaked out if somebody walked into my classroom without a head and an arm. 
I'd probably want to know, A, how they managed to find their way in, because I've got no eyes, but well, to that way madness goes. Let's not get too excited. The size of shoes. Do they take whole number values? And you're going to say, well, well no, because I've got a 6.5 shoe, or I have a 6.5 shoe. All right, there's always exceptions to the rule. You caught me. Don't worry about it. Well, yes, a 6.5 shoe is somebody somewhere, Barry or some Muppet, who basically went, you know what, let's confuse the world. We're going to actually have shoe sizes that are actually discrete data. They're whole number data. Uh, but we're going to confuse them because we're going to put a decimal point in. The way I think of discrete data is, ask yourself the question, can it have some really random decimal value? Can I walk into a shoe shop and say, uh, can I have a 6.473 shoe size, please? If you do that, the shoe lady or gentleman, if you can ever find one, don't know about you, I can walk into a shoe shop, no one ever comes near me. Whole new discussion. But if you walked into a shoe shop and said, can I have a 6.375 shoe, please? They're going to say, uh, no, sir, please leave. That's a little bit of a weird question. So the size of shoes is a bit of a tricky one, but actually it is discrete. What about the number of TV sets in a house? That is also discrete. You can't have a 3.7 TV sets. So that's discrete data. What about the next one, continuous data? Because there are times where we can actually measure things with decimals. And three examples we include here, although there's four. Which one did I miss? Hmm, interesting. Time. Think about Usain Bolt. Yeah, he's a pretty fast runner, but we didn't say recently that he ran in nine seconds because he actually ran in 9.58 seconds. So we need to be able to turn around and say, well, can I describe time as 9.58 seconds? Well, yes, tick, we can. What about distance and weight and height? Can these all be measured to decimals? Well, yes, I could be 187.3642791 centimeters. I could be 100.4 kilos. Oh, that's huge. So we need to be able to know whether our data is discrete, whole number, or continuous, can be measured using decimals. Now, what about can we trust this data? Ooh, that's interesting. Now, I don't know about you, but we all gossip. I don't gossip, that's weird. But how many times have you sat there and someone's walked up and you've gone, don't tell anyone, but... Now, whatever they tell you, are you sure it's right? Are you sure it hasn't been embellished a little bit? Are you sure they haven't gone, mm -hmm, just gonna change one or two of the facts? Play Chinese Whispers. Highlight of my life at school playing Chinese Whispers. You give someone a message, 20 people later, it's nothing like what you said. And we need to be very careful with data that we're going to the source of that data. If I was to walk up to someone and say, hey, Bob, can you tell me your age, please? And they turn around and said, yeah, I'm 12. It's primary data. I've gone directly to the source. I've looked, I've got the actual information provided by Bob. Very happy. Thanks, Bob, you're 12. Much respect. Happy 13th when it comes. But what happens if I was actually talking to a friend or I was reading on a piece of paper that I found on the floor, yo, guys, Bob's 12. Did I go directly to the source of that data? No, I didn't. Did I get it secondhand? Yes, I did. And so in that situation, secondary data. Um, where would we find secondary data? What about newspapers? How many of you read the news? Well, probably very few of you. You're probably 12, 13 years of age and got way better things to do. You're on Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram. Instagram is bad. Uh, but those of us who are old and crinkly, we read the newspaper. And generally speaking, a lot of the information we get from newspapers is secondary data. I didn't find out the information myself. I didn't talk to, oh, I don't know, think of someone, Jennifer Hudson or someone popular, a well, politician. I didn't ask them rage. I didn't ask them their views. I found it from the newspaper. So, yep, we need to be careful. Now, the good news is we're almost at the end of this, and all I've talked about is language. We've done some pictures. You've done a lot of listening. I know, don't fall asleep. We're almost finished. There's uh, four more things we need to know about, four more pieces of language that we need to know, and one of those is population. Now, a lot of people think population is just like of a country, but actually for data and statistics, it isn't. Population is basically a group of people who have something in common. So one of the examples I tend to give here is what about all of the year 12 students in Australia? 
That is a population. We are now going to talk about all of the Year 12 students in Australia. I could talk about all Year 12 students in the world. That would also be a population. But for this one, I'm going to say a population is going to be all Year 12 students in Australia. And populations can change. Now, a sample is when we look at that whole population, those Year 12 students in Australia, and say, well, actually, I only want to talk to some of them. I only want to look at some of those people. And I might turn around and say, well, what about all Year 12 students in Peninsula Grammar? What about all Year 12 students in Victoria? What about all Year 12 students in the school you are in? Yep, you see what you're doing there? You're taking that whole population and looking at just a little, little bit. A census, different word. This is where we actually want to talk to the whole of a population. Yes, we want absolutely everyone in the world. Now, generally speaking, if I wanted to know the ages of a population, I can't physically walk around and speak to everyone. Can you imagine how long that would take? I'd be there forever. By the time I'd ask the age of the last person, the age of the first person would have changed. I mean, with 6 million people, 60 million people, however many people here in Australia. So a census is a way where I go and ask everyone for information. And finally, we have something called an observation. Now, when we can't actually choose the people to survey, and we can only ask the people who are close to us, then this is called an observation. And ladies and gentlemen, much respect, we is done. Thank you so much for watching this video. It is all language, all right? So if you've got your summary book, write down that information now. Now, if you can do so, please, will you click the subscribe button that's coming now and tell your friends that we're here, that we're there. I'm a small person trying to do a big job. Otherwise, videos loading over there that might be of same information. It's been really good seeing you. Thank you for taking the time. This is Mascuro out. See you next time. Bye-bye.